One More Time by Dragon Pie. Chapter One. I remember everything about the first time. I remember every second to the point where I can no longer breathe. It was going to be an adventure. We were going to have fun. We were going to be all right. That was our mistake. Wow, it's really here. I don't believe it. It's kind of scary. Maybe you should go back. Oh, Wes, don't tell me you're gonna wuss out. He's right. This place has a bad aura. I didn't say a word. I don't really try talking them out of finding a haunted mansion, but they wouldn't listen. The idea seemed to be glued to their brains. As nations, we were mortal, so even if the house was haunted, it wouldn't hurt us. It couldn't. So I said nothing. Ah, oh, Japan, rest, come on! Brescia exclaimed. He put his arms around the two and pulled them towards him. It'll be fun! Look, Kittily isn't scared! Jeremy looked back at me and I gave a reassuring smile. Meanwhile, Japan struggled out of Precious grasp. Please, Precious, and don't. Sorry, sorry, Precious said. He retracted his arms hastily. They were still getting used to each other after all this time. Precious was used to being too close with everybody, while Japan needed more space than most. Japan sighed once he was given his space. He took out his phone and played the message. China left him a few hours ago. We found the house, but there's something strange. Don't come here. America! Oh, we have to go. Please be safe, Japan! Do you think something happened? Germany asked. No, it seems America sang got ahead of himself, Japan said. Yeah, they're probably going to try scaring us, <laughs> Prussia added. We're not going to fall for that, right, Itta? Of course not, I said. Both Germany and Japan seemed like by my enthusiasm. After all, if I wasn't scared, then what business did they have being anything but calm? That was Precious' plan all along, and I knew it. But I couldn't help going along with him. The others wanted to have fun, and I couldn't stop them. Precious led the way to the door, and I hung back. China seemed genuinely worried in that voicemail, and when England called out to America, it sounded serious. Maybe they were both trapped like I was. Trapped by some impenetrable force of fate. The door was heavy and it creaked as Prussia pushed it open. The heavy smell of dust and rotting wood sunk in as we took the first steps inside. There was no time to take in our surroundings before the door slammed shut behind us. The sound of plates breaking came from the end of a hall to our right. A dim light could be seen glowing beneath the door there. Immediately, I tried to bail. I turned towards the door and tried to yank it open. When it wouldn't budge, I banged my fist against it. I want to go home now, I cried. This isn't fun anymore. I quit. Hey, come down, would ya? Precious strong hands gripped my waist and pulled me back from the door. It's okay, we're not going to scared. Right, Tita? He gave me a pointing look and I took in a deep breath. Right, I said. It's probably just America trying to scare us, so what do we do now? It may be wise to run, Japan said. He was pointing to the end of the corridor in front of us. At the end, shrouded in flickering light, was a monster. It was a blue-gray with big black eyes. Its head was swelled and misshapen, along with its grotesque body. It had sharp claws extending from lumpy fingers and sharp Fangs protruding from a lipless mouth. What the hell? Prussia breathed. So it was true, Japan muttered. I need to find China. Japan marched up the stairs without a second glance towards the beast. He didn't run, but walked incredibly fast. Germany bolted right after, looking incredibly pale. West, wait up, Prussia called. We shouldn't get separated. You guys, don't leave me behind. I screamed. The monster was slow. It took loud, heavy footsteps as it advanced towards me. I pressed back against the door, my chest constricting and making it hard to breathe. I'd never felt afraid like this before, like I was afraid for my life. Its body was huge and uncoordinated. It let out a groan as it continued coming for me, and I was stuck in place the entire time. 
It wasn't until the monster reached out for me that I had the sense to run. I ran up the stairs, down a corridor, and up more stairs. I tried every door I passed, but they were all locked. I wondered if anybody was coming behind them, not knowing if I needed their help. Germany! I called out. Prussia, Japan, please help me! I reached the third floor and tried the first door. It was unlocked. I was saved. And if my face wasn't already wet with tears, I would have cried. But as soon as I got the door open, something dug into my shoulder. The monster had caught up so fast. Its talon-like claws ripped through skin and muscle, screaming right down to the bone. It dragged me close enough for it to sink its teeth into me. I cried out as blood soaked in my shirt and skin and splashed onto my neck and face as while the monster dug its teeth deep in my shoulder. Desperately, I dug my fingers into its eyes. It let out a roar and tossed me across the room. I hit the wall with a thud. My eyes had blurred and I could only hear the monster lumbering towards me. I struggled to sit up and place pressure on my shoulder. But continued to see through my fingers. Italy, son! The door opened fully and I fought to focus my eyes. I apologize for not helping you sooner. Japan, look out! Japan gave his version of a smile and withdrew a sword. A look doesn't suit you, he said. Forgive me, Italy, son, but you look better with a smile. I tried to smile back at him, flashing my teeth in an awkward display of fear and pain. Japan lunged for the monster. His sword tore through the monster's legs, spilling steam and black goo all over the crown. In turn, the monster took a swing at him, cutting through his torso. I covered a corner and shut my eyes tight, letting out a sob as Japan's blood splashed against my eyelids. I pried them open again as the beast let out a ravenous cry. Japan wore a smirk, which fit with his role as my hero. He was already sweating. His hair was matted with it and clung to the side of his face. He jumped forward and stabbed the sword through its chest just as the monster tore his stomach out. The monster disappeared and Japan fell to his knees. Japan! Japan! I called. I rushed over to him. My legs weighed tons and I crashed to the ground before I reached him. My mind was in any better state than it had been before and my heart was still actively trying to kill me. Where was Germany or China? Somebody else needed to be here. Somebody else needed to help. I pressed the hand to the worst of his wounds. My eyes were completely blurred by tears which fell freely onto him. I pulled desperately at my shirt, thinking I could use it to stop the bleeding and save his life. Somehow I managed to ignore my hands going right through him. The smell of blood soaked onto my hands and arms. His flesh had been completely torn away. I could see his bones, and yet he had the nerve to smile at me. It seems I feared, he said. I couldn't find him, and <coughs> I would not be getting out that life. No, it's going to be okay, I said. I can fix you. Please let me fix you. This was unreal. We were nations after all. This couldn't be happening. It did sent. Even if you could stop the bleeding, I am unable to stand. Please find others and get out. But, but Japan! He reached up and pushed against my cheek, reminding me to smile. It's okay, we're not scared out of me. I swallowed hard. I sniffed and held back the rest of my tears, putting on what I was sure was a very ugly smile. No, we're not. Good, now go. The others will forget I came with you, so please, do your best. Chapter 2 I found Prussia on the second floor. The journey downstairs was a blur. I may have tripped once or twice, but I can't be sure. My eyes were wide open the entire time, and I was sure if anyone looked, they would see Japan's death replaying over and over. Death? Death? Japan was dead! Prasha was behind a door I hadn't checked. It took two minutes of knocking and crying before he opened up and dragged me in. It was a small bedroom with a tiny desk and an even smaller table. The room was pristine and I wondered if Prasha had spent his time stress cleaning. What are you doing out here? He asked. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I is that blood? He took one look at me and blanched. That thing got me. 
I whispered. I couldn't tell him about Japan. That made it too final. He took a look at my shoulder, poking and prodding at the disgusting mess beneath the torn fabric. He tore the sheets off of the bed to make bandages for me and did his best to patch me up. He threw his jacket over my shoulders and turned away, gradually starting to pace. This is bad, he said, talking more to himself than to me. We need to get out of here. We need to find West and run. What about the others? I asked. What about them? They'll be fine without us me to protect them. It's you and West I'm most worried about. I hadn't found Germany or any sign that he was okay. If he was dead... How would pressure react? My own stomach clutched at the thought of finding his bloodstained remains in some far off part of the house. Have you found anybody else? I asked. No, I've been here the entire time. But I found this key though. I held a rusted iron key in front of me. On the end, the number two was etched into the metal. What does this mean? I asked, running my fingers over the key make sure it was real and not a false sign of hope. Well, it opens this door, but this isn't the second room, so... It must be for the entire floor! I shared the same look for a second. Did either of us dare leave the safety of this room? I was already so scared, but everybody else was still out there. I had to be brave and stronger. I'd taken Japan's sword with me in case I ran into trouble. I had to be strong like him. I took the key out of Precious hand and marched out the door. He followed me with an almost maniacal laugh and we got started. We checked every possible place in every room we came across, but still were empty handed. Completely searched two rooms before coming to a third close to upstairs, which kept locking as soon as it was unlocked. Precious spent about a minute going back and forth with the door before I tried knocking. Hello, is anybody in there? I called door opened the tiniest fraction and Franz poked his head out. Go away, he said and shut the door in our faces. I fast, kiss being a coward and let me sin. None. Russia banged his fist against the door. If you don't open this door, I'm going to bust it down. Then I'll put it back up, Franz insisted. Then I'll bust it back down and I'll put it back up. He actually smiled. Her squabbling was so unfitting of this place. If I closed my eyes, then we were back at the world meeting, and nothing was different at all. But I had to open them again when Prussia pushed me aside and called out, Stands back! He growled and took a step back, then took a run at the door, only for Franz to open it right before a collision. Prussia tumbled into the room and hit the large table there. Oh, Italy, are you injured? Franz asked. He began to poke at my poorly bandaged shoulder in a gooey mess beneath it. I'm okay, I said. The remnants of my smile seemed convincing enough for him. Good, good. We should try to get out of this horrid place now. I'd like to get back before the world starts missing my beautiful face. Franz, you dick. Pressure groaned. He stumbled over to us while clutching his side. Did you at least find anything useful? Find anything? I've been too busy hiding from that beast to be looking for clues. You're the least important here. You find us a way out. I cringed at that remark and a resulting outraged screech from Prussia. I knew they could argue for hours on end, and if I waited that long, we would all be eaten. I knew they would be right there when I got back, so I continued on upstairs.